So perhaps someone has some comments or thoughts they would like to share during this little presentation. In the West, I have what's something called an icebreaker. Icebreaker. He's asking about the community or are women because um, in the end of, is it just a community of devotees or are there other social rights that uh, inspire to share the way of life and stay there? Mm -hmm. So Originally, the, most of the devotees who are living in Sharanagati were living in the Vancouver Temple, which is about four hours from Sharanagati. And after hearing repeatedly that Srila Prabhupada wanted his followers to start <coughs> rural communities, agrarian communities, they found the, the property in Utah. Nebože původně žili v tom Vancouveru, když slyšeli o Pravopády tolikrát, že i s Vodaní měli zakládat nějaký vrnkovský, prostě zemědělský komunitu, tak se získal ten pozemek a Vodaní se tam nastěhovali. So the community is entirely devoted, so they're dedicated to trying to please Pravopád through this community. Takže je to vlastně sama komunita Vodaní, který se tam staví, který způsobem drží Pravopád. What's not mentioned here, what's actually very important, is that we have our own school. So it's all devoted children. It goes from kindergarten to twelfth grade. And the teachers are also devotees. But the uh, curriculum is through the internet, so when they graduate at 12th grade, the graduates get a regular high school diploma. It means if they want to, they can go to the college of their choice because they have this high school. But meanwhile, they've grown up in a devoted community with devotees and devoted teachers. In Hartfield, my daughter graduated about two years ago, and now she's in Bhaktivedanta College in Rahadesh. So it's a very wonderful and really essential addition to the community. We find we can do without a hospital, we can do without a police station, we can do without a post office, but we can't do it out of school. So how big is community? It's between 20 and 25 families. Right now there are 15 students in the school. And the statistic is that it's growing or basically remains the same for the last seven years. So how does the Facebook For the last several years it's been pretty much the same. We have a process of admission to Sharanagati where the, the couple 
uh, submits an admission application and then those who are presently residents can choose to veto it if they have some reason to veto the application. Takže máme svůj proces, jak přijímat tam nový přistěhovalce do šelená, kde ty vždycky se vyplní žádost, kterou podají ty nějaký většinou pár, když se tam chtěli nastěhovat a ti, kdo už tam žijou, to posoudí a budou to vetovat, že by to přesel, že to nebude. And if there, if there are five vetoes, then the people who are applying must appeal. Takže pokud je těch veto pět, tak ti, kdo o to říkci žadatelé, So in that way, the existing residents have some control over who their neighbors are. Also, part of the application process is a police check. Uh, history of any sort of child abuse on the part of the applicants. Unfortunately, this is a terrible age, so we have to take all these precautions. Because one neighbor who is not following the principles can be such a disturbance to the entire community. Just one more question. Who is basically qualified to be teaching in these kind of schools out there? How do you choose these qualified people to teach? At present we have three teachers, or perhaps two and a half. One is a teacher that's certified by British Columbia. She's just recently initiated, and before this she was teaching in the public schools in British Columbia. And the other two are husband and wife team, and uh, the husband graduated with a degree in sociology. He's a second generation. Both his parents are disciples of Srila Prabhupada. And then his wife uh, assists him also. Are you going out sometimes to programs like for the public around the city so you concentrate more on your like cultivation of spiritual life to build it? Jestli víš nějak inventivně, jak podělat nějaké programy na seznámení s prostředí lidí, nebo se spíš soustředí na jako kultivaci duchovního života v těch lidí. There's a large town an hour and a half from Sharnagati, it has an odd name, it's called Kamloops. Tam je asi hodinu a půl od Sharnagati nějaký město, který má nějaký tenhle název. Kamloops. Kamloops. Kamloops, it's a population of about 300,000. So in the summer they have a big festival program near the river there in Kamloops, so we go and have kirtan. And we also do a yearly parade through the main street of the town that's much closer, just a half hour away. A population of 3,000. And at that time we have, we were Doti, Sari, Bekartong, Dung. Sometimes we take um, a uh, rough cart, small rough cart. To se můžu tím do Doti, Sari, a hned na kartání, kdy máme svou malou, malou výsledku. And we go through the entire main street. There are people lining both sides. And we go through the whole. And yearly we have one Rafi Atra in Sharanagati, country style Rafi Atra. And we have a lot of people in Sharanagati. 
and you go all the way, it's a very long procession with the deities and also, of course, chanting. And at the end of the festival site, the children from the school have a performance for everyone. That usually you have 150 or 200 people that come from Vancouver and other towns. No koniec wszystkie pary tam dzieci grają na tym przedstawieniu. Na końcu te strojowe zjeździ się tam tak sto parę sobie z tej liczby kurwy właśnie. And invariably the people are very grateful to get out of the cities. Nie są więc ich dzieci, nie są takie dobre jedzie nie stały. Ale wszystko. I have two questions which are connected. So first, uh, are you originally coming from the city or from the village? And second question is, how was it for you um, to actually live every day in the village if you are originally coming from the city? For you? I grew up in a suburb of Manhattan. About 20 miles from the center of Manhattan. But uh, I lived near several parks and I pretty much grew up in those parks. Practically when I was not in school I was in the park. So my husband and I moved very often during our many, many years, decades, and finally we wound up in Los Angeles. And really for the sake of our children, we thought that we should live in the country. So we moved there for them, but it turned out it was actually very good for us as well. And it was a big adjustment because although we're not always conscious of it, usually there's continuous noise in the cities. There's always some kind of vibration. Když si to nesměl vědomí, tak do městech je pořád nějaký hluk a nějaký vibrace. Ale v Šarnáky, a zvláště v zimě, je to úplně ticho. V Šarnáky, a zvláště v zimě, je to prostě ticho. A já jsem našel, že ta ticha v mé mysli, ta malá ticha v mé mysli, byla velmi silná. V tom tichu jsem si všiml, že jak je nějaký šepot, nějaký šramot v mé mysli, tak to je velice hlasitý. A zvláště to bylo nonsense. That was nonsense. So I had to learn to deal with that, which I think was a very good lesson for me. So how did you deal with this nonsense? <laughs> well, the first step was I became aware of it. And then I, I admitted that it was just complete nonsense, just a waste of time. And now it was a waste of time, invariably it would be the same thing over and over, like a stuck record. And so from that um, very sober understanding, I decided I should fill it with other things, so I began especially focusing on Prabhupada's lectures. I had the entire collection of his lectures from the Gita, Shri Malatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya. And when those were playing, then it made sense for me. Když jsem si pustila, tak ty nesmysly odcházejí.
Takže to je ta komunita soběstačná, kolik se to musí kupovat a kolik si tam vyplodí samé zelené zvuky. Well, as I mentioned in this film, we're off the grid, so we're self-sufficient in making our own electricity. We have solar panels, hydropower, and then for backup, we generate. And we also grow vegetables, uh, many varieties of vegetables, and a few different fruits. Máme jako sklady v šaranách, že když je spousta věcí, tam můžeme po měsíce skladovat na ty fadalství. Internet jo, ale nemusí být zvětný mobile phone. Internet a mobily, která máme lepší. Mentioned the children they have the internet to do their curriculum in the school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They <laughs> also, also have in our homes. Do you also have the school school with internet to study on the computer? Have you presentation you mentioned uh, meeting Shabrabat? So I wanted to ask you when you met him for the first time and when was it in Hollywood? Did you see the popular poster of Shabrabat? So, as mentioned there, this my friend from college, he went to India before I did. He was doing his master's thesis on the Hare Krishna people. So he had to do a doctoral work on So he joined Sri Prabhupada and the devotees in Surat in Gujarat. And then he would write me these amazing letters. This is before the internet. So you actually had to write on a piece of paper and put it in the mail. And three weeks later, <laughs> And he would say in these letters that in the newspaper every day they would publicize which Rose, the Harinam party was going to go down. And the schools and the factories in Surat were closed so that all the people could line those roads and honor the devotees, Prabhupada's followers, as they went on Harinam through the streets. 
se na to zavřeli školy a továrny, aby mohli levovat ty ulice, které byly plátky, aby žáci šli, aby mohli vzdávat poctu. Zatímco na západě, když chodili o venkou ulicí, to je sem ten cistu postní, měl to, jak se jim vidí, jak posmívat. Říkají, proč si radši nenajíte práci a takhle tady nenajíte čas a pak tady vykumulují mozky. But in Surat they came with garlands and incense and worship for the Buddhists. Surat they even received girlandi or one of the chicky or skiwali. Sometimes the garlands were piled so high that the Buddhists couldn't see them. And they didn't have any tolling girlands or any just to be there and see the sun down. And the people were so eager to serve the devotees, they would invite them all. There were about thirty to their homes for prasad. Kdyby byli tak děti vysloužit, to nevím, že všechny zvalí do svých domů, asi 30 do domů, tam bylo až nějak tvořené prsány. Takže děti byli jaké měli čtyři jako plnohodnotný jídla každý den. To znamená, že po každý hostitel a hostitelka přicházeli a tady ještě si přidejte, ještě si prosím vás přidejte. And the dishes were delicious. So the boys sometimes became ill because they were all in the kitchen. So I was receiving these letters, and I was like hearing from another world, from another planet. It was amazing. Měl jsem dostávat tyhle dopisy a to byly jako zprávy z jiného světa, z jiného planety. So then my friend wrote, well, you should come, you should join me here. It's wonderful for photography. We're both photographers, so he said, photography is great. So I went, and at that time, the devotees in Srila Prabhupada were in Kanda. Postavili obrovský stan v centru Bombay a byli na to poutávky po celém městě, takže každý večer se tam scházeli 10 tisíc lidí. A měli mámorová postova, která jsme nastívali, a bylo to jako chrám s celým ranním programem a s přednáškami. And Prashad distribution for 10,000. Which meant Puri's and Halva. So it was a, an astonishing thing for me. I didn't understand Prabhupada's message or what he was offering, but I was very moved by the reverence that people had for him and how grateful they were that he had brought their culture to the West with such success. To byla jako úžasná věc a já jsem nechápal, že by to malo poselství, ale strašně jako mě pravo, jak lidi projevují ta opádový úctu a jak si ho váží za to, že jejich vlastní kulturu to představují západní lidem. So at that time I got to meet Prabhupada uh, briefly and uh, he was a gentleman, warm and friendly and fatherly life. Tuhle tu dobu jsem se zprávou plánou potkal jenom krátce, že jo, čempionem na bytě popřelí a to táta. A he suggested to my friend and I that we photograph in Vrindavan. A mě doporučil, aby jsme dělali, aby jsme jeli na pozitu Vrindavan. And it turned out that although he didn't really know me, he could not have given me a more perfect instruction. A ukázalo si, že když mě neznal, tak mě nemohl dát lepší pokyn. Because my parents were atheists, so they raised my brother and I as atheists. And I was such an avid atheist that I had an atheist. And I was such an avid atheist that I had a Catholic friend in high school that I converted to atheism. Takže jsem byl atheist, ale jsem byl na střední škole kamarád, byl jsem to, že jsem byl katolík, ale taky jsem z něj udělal atheist. 
But when I went to Vrindavan on Prabhupada's instruction, I lived there for a month, and I started to understand that there was something more than this mundane world. Jsem pak jel na Prabhupádu, pokud do Vrindávu, no až vás tam asi měsíc, tak jsem pochopil, že je tady něco víc, než jenom tam ten hodný sluk. Vždy jsme ve Vrindávu, ale potkali jenom dva lidi, kteří mluvili anglicky. Takže nás viděl, jak říkal Jai Rádi. And I would sit with the widows in a temple every morning for three hours while they chanted the Mahamantra. Those were the pictures you saw in black and white. Those were sitting here. So that was very transforming to see the depth of their faith. And I felt they had something through their faith that I was denying myself through my faithlessness. So after that we went to the Iskand temple in Calcutta and I was more ready to hear what Prabhupada was saying. Potom jsme jeli do Iskandského krámu v Kalkatě a už jsem byl zdravější na to slyšet, co pro pár říká. Máte ty fotky z těch Harinám, když jste měli dělat tam? There's a series called Follow and Shiva Prabhupada, a lemon DVD series, it's a lemon hours. Part of that, you can see the images from Surat films, actually. And my friend John is also in that. He has a mustache. And he also took still pictures. Someone else took still, but he took still pictures from the garland. Actually, what they also did, because it was sunny, they draped saris across the streets on the top so that the roses would be shaded from the sun. Takže taky něco nafotil, dokonce co tam dělali, že když bylo tak horko a slunečno, tak oni natáhli sáry nad těma ulicema a vyhledaně byli ve stínu. But mostly the young people prefer for horses. They're more exciting. The young, the young girls that grew up there each one had their own horse, and you would see they were galloping over the down the we have an elected board of a maximum of 11 people. <laughs> Takže máme tam jako vedoucí radní na těch jednáctech, které jsou volení.
Ty pěkně zpíváš.
But in moving to Sharon Agatee from Los Angeles, we cut our overhead by about two thirds. This is this is in store for Sharon. I think we're going to catch it. Yeah. This is this is not just as much as it was meant to be. All of a sudden, we had no rent. We had to pay. That was a huge expense. And we're going to have to pay for the rent. It's going to be a big property. We bought a small house that was so inexpensive we could just buy it. So immediately, no mortgage, no rent. And then the food was much cheaper. And uh, you know, in so many ways, so we were able. We also simplified it. We weren't purchasing as much because there wasn't as much to purchase. Taky jsme se zjednodušili, co jsme přestali tolik nakupovat, protože tam nebylo co kupovat. Máme máme krásný božstvo Gornita, je se kačakem právě. A také family zvolí všechny do své domu. Just like we had two families together to have a big family festival. We had one festival that was organized by Jumuna Devi Dasi, who lived in Sharanati for over ten years. We all know that she came here for ten years to put on a big festival. And when she went to India, she took with her measurements for all the home deities for all the homes in Sharanati. When she went to India, she took all the measurements. And in Vrindavan, she had outfits made for each and every deity in each and every home in Sharanati, matching. So one day we brought all the deities together in the main temple. <laughs> And we spent the entire day there, feasting and uh, having plays. Just one time. Jimon invited us into nine groups. And each group was given a different aspect of bhakti. It means either shravanam, kirtanam, like that. Každá skupina jako měla zadaný jeden způsob bhakti s dojítí druhé. Hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping the deity, all these different aspects. And then they had to perform something that reminded everyone of that aspect of bhakti. Měla naslouchání, opilování, vzpomínání, vzpomínání božstvě, pak každý, každá skupina měla něco nějak se hrát, který něco bude připomínat, který měl ten druhý hodně s tím. So it was her and you who received this letter from Prabhupada in the beginning that the devotees say we are living outside and we should move somewhere to the city and Prabhupada is like, no, 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 it was her and Jimun and Dina Tari. Oh, Dina Tari. They were young, young women. I think they were Tari. They were studying the piece. They were studying the program. 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 Do you have a Sunday feast? Do you have a Sunday feast regularly from people from other villages home for programs? Mostly for the Sunday feast, it's the residents. Do you have a Sunday feast regularly from people from other villages home? Also, you mentioned about cows, they retired. So how do you sustain them? It's quite large financially, you know, plus to sustain the full cow and how about veterinary um, certificates, etc. Does it have some impact on your village? Jak se staráte o ty staré krávy, tam to je to náročné, jako finančně, nebo ty všechny veterinární potvrzení. 
In Canada, for the elderly people, the government gives them pension. V Kanadě starým lidem dává vláda penzí. And because the uh, cost of living is so low in Charity, that pension is more than that individual needs. So we have one elderly man who's taken responsibility and from his extra money he pays for hay for the winter for the cows. And if they need it, that's that money. Od něho, který dostává takový vysoký důchod, a už má pro sebe část, a za to teď kupuje seno na zimu a platí ve terénu, co je třeba. To má jako svou službu pro krajičky. So two of the people that stopped were Jamuna and her husband Gurudas. And Gurudas knew about our training, our history and photography, my friend and I. So he invited us to come to Calcutta because they were doing a Vyasa Puja book for Sri Prabhupada from all the devotees in India. Tak to nás pozvala, že jsme dobrou kalkatý, kde se stalo lidé, já jsem to knížku prošel, pro pár lepší, které myslím, že... So I didn't want to leave Vrindavan. At that time, there were so many pilgrims, very exotic looking pilgrims, coming to Vrindavan to celebrate the Mastami. Já jsem nechtěla z Vrindavan hodit, protože jsem vlastně tam scházeli různou zudzatický, vyhůžející poutnice, kde tam oslovovali ten Mastami. But my friend John thought we'd been there long enough and there was some service we could do, so we left. So from Vrindavan we went to Calcutta. And at that time there was something called the Bangladesh War going on. This is now the summer of 1971. And there were refugees that left Bangladesh and came to Calcutta, one million of them. So when we got off the train, the entire platform was a very large platform in Howland Street was entirely covered with these refugees, whole families on the train station. And similarly, throughout the city, people were living on the streets because they had left their country and had come for shelter to Calcutta. So the entire city was inundated with people. And the Calcutta temple was a um, very austere, very difficult place to live. The devotees had hired what they, because the devotees couldn't function well in an Indian kitchen, they had hired what was supposed to be a Brahmin cook. And unfortunately, he was not a Brahmin and he couldn't cook. <laughs> And the ingredients they got for cooking were inferior. So there was tremendous um, tension in the temple due to poor health amongst the devotees. 
jsem chránil do vězení na pětí kvůli tomu, že jsem měl špatný zdraví. A když ten chrám nebyl čistý, jsem tak jel do vězení. A když tam spolu bojovali. So, um, although I had appreciated Sri Prabhupada and I was beginning to appreciate spiritual life, I was not about to stay in that situation. I had completed two years of college and I had two years pending. And I had the application form for the other balance of the two years in the bottom of my backpack. So I pulled that out. It was all creased and wrinkled. That's the application form for the two years of college. Oh, this what you said? Yeah, this this balance thing. For students, okay, yeah. And you had a paper applying for the balance. Vlastně ta škola byla na čtyři roky, ona měla dva roky za sebou a na dně batohu měla zmačkanou žádost ještě jako prostě přihlášku na ty zbývající dva roky. So I was filling out the blanks, you know, putting in my name in this form, so I could return to college in America. Já jsem si vyplnila tuhle tu přihlášku, abych se vrátila na vysokou školu do Ameriky. And my god sister Chitra Laker, she saw me doing this. To viděla and she said to me, you can't leave now because Srila Prabhupada is coming. So that became my mantra. It was not the Maha mantra. So my mantra was, I can't leave now because Srila Prabhupada is coming. And then Prabhupada came, he, that, that uh, building where the temple is, it's the same building they have now, and this very wide staircase, it was made by the British, a very regal staircase, and he walked up the staircase. Takže Prabhupada přijel v té budově souhradní do dneška, tam je široký schodiště, který postavili Britové, to je královský schodiště, a Prabhupada teď po něm vstoupal nahoru. And we all sat in front of him, his motley crew. Motley means be, be driveled. He's uh, sad looking. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so he said a few words of thanks and appreciation, and then he said, Tomorrow morning we'll have a this to ghost in my room, and all of you are coming. So the next morning, after breakfast, we all filed into his room one by one and sat down. We had a room big enough to accommodate all of us. And Prabhupada looked around and he said, so where is Himalati? And he told everybody that, and so I'm going to go and bring him up. He wanted everyone there without exception. So finally, when we were all assembled, then Prabhupada spoke. And he spoke the basic Krishna conscious philosophy that he always spoken about how we are not these bodies, how we are not meant for this world. Takže to základní filozofii vědomí Krišny na pouště a vždycky, že my jsme to vrátili a potřebujeme do toho světa. Máme tolerovat a nevzvětelný interfénic na světě. A to je příklad ze svého života. 
He said when he first came to America, he had to share a refrigerator with someone who kept meat in the refrigerator. Seděli v lednici, v stejnou lednici používat jako někdo, kdo tam by měl maso. So mind you, he didn't talk about the heart attacks he had on the Jolly Duty when he was coming over. To by měl u těch srdečních záhvatek, který měl na Jolly Duty, když šel před moře. He didn't talk about the crazy person that he had to live with, and he became more and more crazy as he was living with him. Takže toho to ani nemluvil, to je měl takové přítomně, protože taky ještě jsou tyhle s tím blázně jeden čas. He didn't talk about the bitter cold that he was so unaccustomed to coming from India. Ani mluvil ani o tý hrozně zimě, na kterou nebyl zvyklý s nimi. When he picked an example of austerity from his own life, he talked about having to share a refrigerator with someone who kept meat in that refrigerator. Když jako chtěl říct nějaký příklad ze svého života o tý askezinec, Vybral příklad, že sdílel lednici s někým, kdo tam měl maso. On mi řekl jen tak maso, jako doma, který říkal, já vám to řekl, tak nechceně, že jsme si uvědomili, jaký to musel být, kdo říká, že to je to maso, kdo je jeho kalibr. So when I had gone into that room, for that is the ghost day, I felt like Atlas, you know, Atlas, he has the world. Because there were just so many problems in that temple, I just wanted to leave. It was just extremely difficult. But after this, the ghost day, when I left, I felt like I wasn't even touching the ground. Když jsem z toho ještě takové ještě odcházel, jak jsem se cítil, aby bych ani nešlapal po zemi. To jsem poprvé osobně jako zakusil a sílu zlepšil toho vláda. Nyní svými slovy dokázal přeměňovat naše vědomí. A přeměňovat teď na vyšší vědomí. A přeměňovat teď na vyšší vědomí. So I was very happy that you tried and told me that mantra. So my friends feel happy that you tried and told me that mantra. We are spending more time with Guru Das and Jai Ram in India. Yes. Um, actually, when I first went to the temple in Bombay, when I first arrived, on the way there I had gotten extremely sick with diarrhea. So I thought, John and I both thought we should honor Prashadam in the temple because we wouldn't get sick from that. So we went to this Bombay temple I just arrived. We met Malati at the door. And she suggested before Prashadam I should wash my hands. So she pointed to the door to the woman's ashram. So I opened that door very innocently and I heard this ear-piercing primordial scream. Yeah. It was extremely loud. So what had happened was that uh, Jamuni, Amy Gossi, was sitting with her petticoat and Choli, and she was applying T-lock And she saw me from the corner of her eye, and I had just gotten off the plane. I was wearing slacks and a blouse, and she thought a man off the street was entering the ashram. So 
So that was her reaction. She had very strong lungs in the vocal cords. So that was my introduction. <laughs> And we saw her again, as I mentioned, in Vrindavan. She was also in Calcutta. So I can tell if you like, I tell one story from Calcutta, but you know? Yeah, uh, in Calcutta, the, the ladies chanted all their rounds before Mangal Arti. Mangal Arti was at 4.30. And it takes two hours to chant around. It means I got up at 2 a.m. I bathed, and then they were in the temple from 2.30 to 4.30. And I would so I was there in the ashram, so they woke me up too at 2 a.m. <laughs> and for me it was like I hadn't even been asleep at all. <laughs> so after the, my bath, they wrapped me up in a sari. And Calcutta was so hot, this is the summer, this sari had dried in a ball. Uh, it, it was in a ball and it just dried that way. And so when they opened it up, they had unlimited windows. <laughs> Completely groggy and on the way, just a few feet from the temple door, and I remember I forgot to brush my hair. There's one candle lighting the way in this dark office. So just before the temple door, I see this cold big smile, this beautiful white smile coming out of the darkness. And that was Chimuna Devi Dasi. So she looks right at me and she says, If you put some tea lock on, you'll look even more beautiful. <laughs> so I was a very cynical person and I, I looked at her and I thought, and I thought I was cynical? <laughs> but then I looked at her and the dimness there and she was sincere. She really meant to be about this and to walk on. Even though I was groggy, my hair was a mess, and I so I had unlimited wrinkles and I was stumbling around. She actually believed that if I put some tea on it, it would be more beautiful. She was a unique personality, always encouraging. And her faith was not born of sentiment, but it was actually rooted in Prabhupada's teachings. Successful in silence. Yes. 
One thing that we found very important, my husband and I, and every house to ashram, is always to keep your sense of humor. We tend to take things too seriously, our opinion, what we want. The way things should be done. But if we lighten up a bit, then we can actually have respect for each other's opinion and see the validity of each other's opinion. And I just recently read a, a letter Prabhupada wrote to a Grihasta couple, and he said, arguments will come, that's natural, just forget about it. So we tend to take our differences too seriously. But if we remember that Krishna and the spiritual master are the center, and there are many, many different ways to please and serve them, and we can loosen up a little bit and honor other ways of pleasing and serving them. And instead of seeing differences as a point of contention, we can see them as a beautiful variety. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah.